you flip you flip it all around and say actually they make the entire film that the a bucket chain of like some somebody's mm-hmm. discovered that something's happening and then somebody else has discovered the plans mm-hmm. and then they're pac- they're frantically trying to hide the fact or the, the Empire knows they've discovered the plans because <clears throat> at the start of a new hope Darth Vader's like I know you intercepted that transmission so this the Empire knows that they know I like that about the Death Star so there's probably something you kind of take make that like, kind of angle rather than just saying here's a you could make it like a chase movie then so yeah. if you have it like you know Vader's basically the Terminator and yeah. you have like kind of Sarah Connor and uh, you know kind of Kyle Reese in whatever role yeah. with the you know the, the plans are bouncing but they're trying to outrun the Empire you've got to find you've got to, yeah. you've got to, try, you've got to get them to Rebel so, HQ somehow yes uh huh and uh, yeah the end, the end of the, the series is they, they get their ship gets blown up but they mm-hmm. transmit the plans yeah to awaiting rebel spy you also said something uh, to me during um, we covered the prequels in a previous podcast an episode I think it was two or three you discussed this idea of there's that shot I think it is in the third or maybe it's the second where um, they press a button and like oh we've got the Death Star plans and like they reveal the full thing you argued really well there that you would have thought no no you just showed it as part of it so the idea of the Death Star not the not the fight yeah because it's too on the nose it's too like oh look here's the Death Star lol (laughs) Whereas, I mean, and yeah, also the, the fact that the Death Star plans, they find them on Geonosis as the Geo, as Geonosian construction. They would not have the same architectural style as the Empire. The, the Empire build big grey blocks, whereas the Geonosians are like sort of beige colour and shit. So they wouldn't have built, they wouldn't, you know, to show the Death Star, it doesn't fit within that context. And then it also spoils the reveal of, lol, here's the Death Star, it's two on the nose too. So yeah, if you'd shown a weapon system or some kind of subsystem rather than the whole thing, which, yeah, if, if somebody in. Rogue One had got a hold of some technical readouts they didn't understand. They're like, they couldn't build this. This is far too. These these mm-hmm. plans are like ten thousand kilometers wide. That's yeah. not right. Mm-hmm. But they don't show a big spherical moon sh- moon shaped laser dish. They show bits and pieces, pipes, architecture, internal reactor systems that we've not seen before. Yeah. But are suggestive of something unimaginably terrifyingly large. What if you had it the. Uh you took that idea and ran with it further and said that we've th- there's a kind of universal code o- over certain blueprint parts on different worlds so let's say the laser part is being developed on this planet mm. the reactor core has been developed here and the plans to bring it all together eventually the rebels clock this and it becomes a kind of planet jumping chase movie of we have yeah. to go collect either all the plans or some kind of oh, inc- maybe, thing, maybe an encryption code thing, you, you make it into some basically make it into a James Bond film it's like somebody uh-huh. somebody's let slip somewhere that the Empire's building something fucking dangerously large yep. so one you've got to discover what it is and then we never see if we never see what it is we discover the name it's called the Death Star it's going to have a weapon that can mm-hmm. destroy planets Right, okay, that, that's that. The rebels would be like, "Oh shit, we should find out about this." Yeah. So you get elements of yeah, tracking it down, finding informants, fighting off imperial spies and, and imperial guards, and and chasing, and and then yeah, everyone dies at the end, but they manage to transmit the plans to mm-hmm. some awaiting Leia. I think you know, like having it more like a chase movie, I like yeah. a lot. I think a race against time or a chase film, but maybe either having it that you're doing a planet jumping thing to collect so the plans aren't in one place you're jumping around to get them or you maybe have a plot device where it's an encryption code I, don't know. I, li- I like the so, idea of, the, of, of us having a scene where where someone hits an encryption code and the plans start to form the Death Star on a screen but we cut away before we get yeah. the full ball so I, I think as I say that I know they've already kind of fucked it because in the prequels they showed it on that hologram anyway and they show it half being built it, in the third the, the, the last ten seconds of the third film, yeah, they show us that have built Death Star. I know, but I, I, I Again, just that was that was a blown load too soon. Yeah, they, they should have. But it doesn't take. If, 20 you, had, years to build if this. you had the yeah the, the frame because it was too it was too far along. Yeah, if you had the sketchiest frame with star destroyers all around, maybe. Because again, I think in Rogue One the other problem with it is that the thing's already fucking built. Yeah, I think that's a problem because the, the way yeah. they set the time period, it's like. Well, okay. Again, we it's five minutes before New Hope. It's literally a five minutes before New Hope. Because you said to me that you felt this enhanced the idea of the weak spot. Yeah. But I've thought about this a bit more. And when I talk about the issue of it being built, is that would it not have made more sense to. If, if you're going to leak a piece of information out, as opposed to leaking the, the bit about the weak spot once the thing's fucking built, could we not have destroyed this before it was built? And I think the problem that I have with this is that it, it just seems very weird that this guy has known about this, 
He's got the plan to help the rebels, but he's going to wait till it's able to destroy planets before no, we but go that's the thing do is, something is, about this, guys. Because he knows the emperor, the empire is too strong, so he's got to do it. So the, I think that the, the so the so the argument for me is that um, if if it was an obvious flaw, they would have put a grill over the top, and that would have solved all of this. Where, so the whole point of it being a, a non-obvious flaw that he's deliberately made a non-obvious flaw is how he gets is, is how he because he, he knows that the empire will build this thing anyway regardless. So by working from within the system, he's able to expose it in a way that they otherwise couldn't. Because if he says, "Oh, quick rebels, come and destroy this before it's too late," they just build build it bigger, build it better, or build Do another one. Do you explain in it that at the end of Revenge of the Sith, I assume this is in construction. It's somewhere in the galaxy in secret. Yeah. It's, I think it's, it's always told to be in secret. But then in, in this movie, it's hyperspacing around all over the shop. It's just, it's out and about at this point. The, no, this is the, the this, this creates a problem, doesn't it? Because in New Hope, everyone's like, "Oh my god, what the fuck's that thing?" I bet we must know what this thing is. Well, no, because they, no, they do, they do mention. There's a line where they say like, "Oh yeah, it was a, it was an industrial mining accident or something when they test fired it on the temple." So they, they say they they have a cover story. So the Death Star's not been revealed to the galaxy, and everyone that's seen it is dead. So there, so that's fine. But yeah, so but so it, but they're not in a new hope. But they're not. It, it gets between Alderaan and uh, Yan Yavin, like somehow. So it does have hyperspace capabilities. We uh-huh. we assume. Yeah. So it can like fart around, which seems yeah. That that's always one thing. It's been a little bit weird to me. It's like a thing that large cannot travel in hyperspace. It, but it can. It has, it has to be able to because otherwise it couldn't but, but, move. If it's the size of a moon, it would, it would gravitate. It, oh god! I, mean, I know. I, look, I, mean, I know Lucas physics, but that that's yeah. pushing the boat out. This is why we, fucking far. You notice in a new hope they never mention. Mm-hmm. It, it just it, it's just there. It got to Yavin Four somehow. <laughs> we don't care how. The image of this thing rolling through space is really funny, <laughs> but like yeah, I mean the idea that it has some kind of like impulse engines. And it, it, it also, I think it's more menacing if it travels slowly. The yeah. idea this thing can crack light speed, it just, it, it seems ridiculous. It becomes like a pinball. The thing about hyperspace in Star Wars is it's not so much about speed, it's about maneuverability. Um, you know, because Han Solo says the Millennium Falcon's the fastest ship. Yeah. Um, and that's, it's not because it's fast, you can do the Kessel Run in, what is it, 12 parsecs. And parsecs a measure of distance, not of speed. So it's about, it's about being able to find the the gravity wells, or avoiding the gravity wells, or flying close to them without falling out. So something as large as the Death Star may well be able to use hyperspace, but it wouldn't be able to. It wouldn't be as nippy in hyperspace. It would, so it wouldn't be able to. It wouldn't be able to slingshot around. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't be able to. It wouldn't be able to slingshot around yeah, that idea planets. In, okay, in, yeah. in the in the same way that a Millennium Falcon, which is tiny and very maneuverable, can. But it's still yeah, that, that, something that large. I just can't see it having hyperdrive. It, it's it's a. I think it, 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 I think to saying something along the lines of that it could um, it, that it, it it could use the gravity of planets to slingshot. I think could have been explored in a relative. Yeah, okay, that sounds sort of believable. So like it, it's got some kind of thrust engines that can propel it into an orbit and it can slingshot out of an orbit. I'm like, all right, yeah, okay, that's wait, that's hand wavy enough. But the ha- I mean, also because they've never shown it. So, so that's the thing. It's, it's, in a new hope, they just never showed it. We, it must have been. A, we we know in the back of our minds that this is a problem. We we can't really narratively justify, but it. Well, they could, well I think that's the thing because they could have. I, th- I mean, I think the idea yeah. that, they, that these things take a long time to build and they have to build them in a roughly set location, or they take a while to move about, I think is fine. I think that, yeah. that, that, that sh- that's how. They but the thing is, you know, it, between Alderaan and, and Yavin in a new hope, it's about you know it's a period of a few days, so that's so it's still moving slightly too fast for comfort. Whereas, um, in my favourite example of, of Star Wars super weaponry, um, at the end of Star Wars Empire at War, there's a, a super laser mounted on a super star destroyer. So it's not as big as the Death Star super laser, but it's still big. Yeah. But it's going to be more manoeuvrable because it's yeah. on a sort of a very big spaceship, but still a spaceship but, rather than a moon. But I, th- I think what, what uh, that's the kind of answer that gets you the middle ground. I I just don't I'm just, I don't think that it was explained well enough why they would not have why word would not have gotten out and why they would not have tried to mount an assault while this thing was under construction. I don't think that was hand-waved enough for me. Yeah, I because think it, it was too they, mobile for it to be covered up so well, yes. The, the idea that, that like Mads obviously has built in a weakness is then like, if this thing ever gets to the point of being fully constructed, this is what you have to hit. I'm okay with that. I'm less okay with the fact that he has been able to leak information out but has left it. It's kind of like, it's that horrible time travel trope in a way. Like, we're going to travel to the day before the alien invasion. 
we'll travel a week or a month before yeah. it or a year before it and this is a bit like that where it's like they've kind of left it last so minute so dot com so, well, that's this. Like, this is the problem where yeah, mm-hmm. if the Death Star was not, did not take 20 fucking years to build mm-hmm. um, if, imagine he, instead that he's been trying to get information out all this time yeah. and has failed like the, yeah. the Imperials that, have been that too tight have, for yeah, it I like that yeah. so uh, yeah another of these things that sort of because there's too many characters going on we haven't yeah. had the chance to kind of explore that, like, that sort of world building detail but you can sort of so you can have the hand wave it that way but but because the Death Star has been under construction for so long he would have managed to let slip a lot sooner you could probably have layered it in a way where you could have had uh, Jin's character um, like in the pr- in prison in our version of this and as she's imprisoned and obviously you could demonstrate the horrors of the Empire through the prison yeah. and <laughs> actually doing slavery actually doing slavery yeah we can finally see it on camera after the prequels <laughs> refused to give us that with Anakin uh, but yeah it, but then how was he having really the beginning 10 to 15 minutes just exploring Mads and just giving yeah. us all that and therefore you have all the narrative justifications with just throwaway lines or just yeah the way the information gets out is mm-hmm. he's building the space station with his kid in an apartment and she overhears something uh-huh. and then when they take her away to coerce him because he's not he's, he's agitating a bit suddenly yeah. she's got she's a, she's in an imperial prison with some uh-huh. dangerous information in her head yeah and then drag that and then, and then because she's in prison she fucking hates it she wants to help the rebels mm-hmm. and then she tells the rebels well do you know they're building this thing and they're all like what no yeah. and then that triggers our race to find the plans to find and then we discover Mads has built a flaw in so it's not all all is not lost Yes, it's nearly done but mm-hmm. and then you could yeah make it more forward motion rather than backward motion so it's yeah. not Mads has triggered the plot it's she's triggered the plot but he's he was already hoping for something like this to happen or something yeah that he's, or, or at least, or again, maybe not building in an intentional flaw, but knowing of a flaw. So the conversation, yeah, more he, like, he knows how so, the reactor so, works. So he's so he's like on on the, the fucking you know hologram phone to somebody and says words to the effect of, "Look, no, we need to change this. We need to change this." No, because it's because because he he, uh, he, would, he would if he deliberately just didn't tell. Like he knows there's a flaw. He knows this exhaust port's actually really fucking dangerous. He just he just doesn't tell. I think that, I, I think I would stick more with the kind of um, Oppenheimer was the guy who built the bomb. Is that right? Possibly the uh, the nuclear. Well, you know that. I am become death destroyer of worlds. Yeah, but he did it. But he didn't. He didn't do it build in a weak spot. He just built the fucking thing. He was a dick. And he knew yeah. he was because he, he well, said that cool. So I, I kind of want him to be more like that. But no, he is that. Yeah. No, he's just a bad guy, and his daughter's the good one. And she and he's going like no if 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 you know I don't know why he's suddenly like, German stop it, you know, <laughs> like you know if he if he does not remove the exhaust pods this will not function and they're they're just yeah. like no fuck it it'll be cheaper it'll be fine I actually do like the kind of the Family Guy joke of just the, the cost cutting measure you know well no because he's he's, he's in, arguing oh, in, sorry, in, yeah. in, um, well in a new hope they deliberately say you know the SR is designed to repel capital ship assault not fighter man, not manned fighter assault and have him fucking say that so, and then have the guy at the other end of the phone go said, oh, the turbo lasers will cover it. no one will get close to this and then oh wait somebody got close but then make, well, make, tar- make that Tarkin make him yeah. the, the ego driven delusional madman and have him be the, the invent- Mads is the inventor guy going no if you want this to work you should you know, make it defensible yeah. against ground fighters against you know kind yeah. of X-wing assault whatever you want to say and have Tarkin go no Lord Vader has decreed the ship must be operational by blah 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 exist yet Okay, cool. You know, you know what I mean. Oh, wait, they do because it's too close to a new hope. But yeah, I, yeah. Uh, it should, it should happen at this a point of in years. the flashback. Type yeah. Of one, yeah. So what I'm saying is, yeah, have that and then have her overhear it and make her the kind of like my dad's a dick, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna escape the plate jail and I'm gonna somehow yeah. go on a swashbuckling adventure to the rebellion and we're gonna go get these damn plans and then by about the thirty minute mark, we're already on the planet, you know, sneaking our way in yeah. and off we go. And I think that's enough. And you could have done that probably so that you have like Mads, you've got Tarkin, you've got her, and then you've got what, like kind of five. A couple uh, of rebel pals and rebel the robot. Pals, Definitely uh, have the robot. So we could kind of do a cast of under 10 significant people. Yeah, that's, I think yeah. That's the, yeah, we had we had like 10 in the rebel crew. Alone. You which know, is I, too many. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, especially when we have these the villains and the, the other people on the other side of the things. So yeah, I think it's, it's possible. It's, the problem then is that it's pulling in too many directions. It's got too much going on, and it's not. Uh-huh. It's not. Ju- it, it, it would have been stronger had it cut off some of the chaff a bit more confidently. I think, or, or just make the chaff mean more. I think the, yeah. the, the, the problem with it is no. But that, I think if you made it mean more, there's there's too much material. You end up with a three-hour Lord yeah, of the Rings, yeah. you know, 
the, the, the idea is to kind of use the, the bullshit at the start to make the character interaction stronger yeah. or basically acknowledge the fact that this is just bullshit and we don't need it in the movie and cut to the chase just get some you know get, have yeah. have some you get know ba- get, get a Basil exposition character in there tell us what we have to know and off on the roller coaster ride we go and we don't need to be jumping between eight fucking planets with dodgy subtitles and going to like fucking you know oh look it's a market just like in the Middle East and there's bombs going off do we and I'm like ah, and then it's did. the guy from the cantina in a new home uh, you're, that's yeah we don't exactly why Why the fuck I mean, for fuck's sake the whole flaw in this movie another I, five I would, ten second scene that just did not need to be there but this is the which is it aggravates me so much because the only view all the shit we said is like okay that would improve it greatly but actually if the characters had just been better this would have been fine <laughs> I would have completely I would not have gone wow it's the best Star Wars movie ever but I would have come out and gone yeah that was yeah. pretty good and the annoying thing is that the, the there was no characterization given properly to the main characters and they were wasting screen time to be honest, on I, C-3PO and fucking Leia. I think I, I liked it more because I'm rebounding from The Force Awakens. Probably on a second watch. Would, yeah. I think we should do a second watch at some point together mm. and we should, uh, yeah, maybe walk her through this. But I mean, I, I, I mean, in terms of the, the space battle gave me exactly what I wanted. I loved what it. The Force Awakens didn't give me. Of, of yeah, two star destroyers being mashed into each other, yeah. that kind of improvisation of like, we've just disabled one. Okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to get through this shield wall that we cannot dis- disable? We don't have the firepower to disable. Oh, I know. We're going to mash star destroyers into it. But it's, it's so good. It's it, just so. It, like, it's what I was thinking about that. I would love to have seen uh, what Gareth Edwards would have done with the Force Awakens because the Force Awakens bar the. Harrison Ford stomping all over the younger cast. Yeah, the characters in Force Awakens and the characterization and the script and the performances were twice as good as this. Yeah, but the direction in the Force Awakens was shit because JJ and the script was still like the over the, the narrative of it was still as messy and pointless. Yeah, I mean it, it was it was a re well okay it was a retread and it was pointless but at least it was more of a it was more in the tone that I would have wanted. This yeah. felt more dark. I think this could be this could be your Star Trek Beyond. In the sense that I went to see Star Trek in the Darkness, the last one JJ did, and it was so awful, so bad. That I went then went to see Beyond, and just because it wasn't into darkness, I really yeah. liked it. it. It's almost like Skyfall and uh, Quantum of Solace. Skyfall isn't actually that good a movie, it's, but it's not a Quantum of Solace, so yeah. therefore you're like, oh my god, it's the best Bond ever. And it's no, I mean, it's I mean, not really. Because yeah, okay. if you go back to Goldeneye, you're like, oh, this is much better. And the same way you go back to New Hope, oh, this is much better. This is, I don't think this film is as good as everyone says it is. My heart still belongs to, like, the expanded universe video yeah. games and shit, so... I mean, yes, yeah, the Star Wars is... It's, the thing, it's always been a rocky ride. It's sad that this stuff has got a level of official endorsement that some of the really good expanded universe stuff is never going to get yeah. and it's now been you yeah. know, dismantled and some of it's being rebuilt a little bit maybe but the good stuff would be yeah so yeah. I, I, I just I'm wondering you know if I kind of feel that, that a lot of the, the original trilogy works and the th- it, it's a brilliant three part story I, I'm just I'm not sure that the stories that we've been shown around that and after it are necessary ones I think doing standalone the prequels stories have a, the right narrative and they are a narrative the rise of the empire I feel is a good thing to tell yeah it's just really badly executed yeah. the, For- the force awakens is utterly pointless and doesn't the, the force awakens resets the universe so that we can have these characters and then focus on the skywalker tale of whatever magical weird interpretation of the force we're going for now um, otherwise like yeah as I, I, I grew up with Expanded Universe video games and they've done really well for me mm-hmm. so they, they occasionally nod to the main trilogy they, or they nod to the state of the galaxy you know set in the New Republic or set in under the Empire whatever and that's that's the that's the hook that's that's your central core of Star Wars to me it's not it's not about the Skywalker family it's not about no. any particular set of characters it's about the state of the galaxy that's that's Star Wars to me. So there's there's plenty of room for standalones, plenty of room for spin-offs. It's just yeah, Rogue One is not really a standalone, and The Force Awakens is definitely not a standalone. But is this a problem we're going to run into with because the battle plan for the uh, the Rogue like Star Wars anthology, which is a pretty ugly name. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not sure about that. But the the ones they have in the works, they're also not standalone because we're getting we're getting a Han Solo movie. Yeah, that's like, not standalone. And we're getting a Boba Fett. 
Which isn't standalone what? because the the, sta- the definite to me is like well what what, Tre- what Star Trek did was like okay we're gonna do Deep Space Nine now I'm not I, I haven't seen this series yeah. I can't speak much about it but I I, ha- I know enough of it and I've seen enough of st- being on TV same with Voyager was there's overlap in the uniforms are the same because of time period so, and so forth but what I'm saying is that the stories. It, they are standalone. Yeah. These are standalone things. Voyager, the whole concept was a ship got punted like miles out into the fucking qu- our quadrant we hadn't explored yet, yeah. and it needs to get back to Federation space. Deep Space Nine is a space station, that, and these aren't connected to the Kirk era Enterprise. These are completely different things. So the thing is, so so you're expanding the universe, but you're telling actually standalone could, things and not relying on it. We, we, like, so I, 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 Han Solo prequel just seems a bit like uh, Boba Fett. Was a bounty hunter. It's more standalone. It's so, more in the ballpark. Yeah, it's like you, you could yeah. I can I could see like I could see a Boba Fett TV series where he just has adventures. Yes, he's uh-huh, just a, a grim bounty yeah. hunter badass going yeah. around taking bounties, uh-huh. killing people, having going on having or just Star Wars bounty hunters and having yeah, some kind of like not having Boba Fett, just having yeah some other yeah, bounty right, hunter exactly. And, then, and that, maybe he meets Boba Fett once and yeah. it's fine and it's funny because he's a cameo. But, but to me, that's more in the keeping of like yeah. how you do it in the same way that like when they did okay we're, did, we're done next generation okay what we can do next. Well, we've done starships. Let's do a fucking space station now. So we're, yeah. we're going to make the jump, and then therefore it, this is completely standalone as a concept and an idea and a cast and everything. And same thing with that. It's in the Star Wars universe, but it's not about Jedi's now. It's about bounty hunters. Good. Yeah. Good. That's standalone. This is not, and neither in a Han Solo movie won't be either because it will. I mean, one what a pointless fucking story to tell because his character arc's been done. The prequel won't work because oh, what he's going to go from a rogue to a rogue. Well, he's going to win Millennium what? Falcon in a card game off Lando, and then. But it, it, I mean, unless you do it that he's a good guy who becomes a rogue, and therefore rogue becomes a good guy so again. For, from maybe that will work. But how does that work? Expanded universe. Yeah. I believe Han Solo was a stormtrooper first, or at some point was a stormtrooper. That might so kind of work. That might kind of work, but it, I don't know what because the, the expanded universe has basically not been a template for any of the official stuff they've been doing yeah. so far. So it I, I, remains I, to be seen. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that's particularly fertile ground to me. I just think that like doing something along. Just, just making a jump away from the main story, like having the confidence and balls to do that, as opposed to like having the original films constantly prop you up. But I think what yeah. I, I admired what Trek did, which was okay, we're gonna do ne- the next generation, and we're gonna underline that and say, no, this is the next generation. We are, we're fuck Kirk is fucking, they're all fucking dead. Oh, we, here we are. It's a hundred years later. We're breaking away from all of that, and we can make reference to it in throwaway lines. But yeah. we're not going to rely on that to prop us up. You know, this is going to be a. They're making, I think, Star Trek Discovery now. And I imagine. And the thing is, the, the, the history of this is yeah. every time they try and do it, it pisses off the core fan base because they go, oh, that's not Star Trek. Oh, that's not this. But then slowly they go, oh, but we really like that. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Because actually, if you have the confidence in your idea and go, actually, this is a good idea and you see it through, it will find an audience. And Trek was massively successful in the 90s because of that. It's now falling down because now it's like, oh no, we have to rely on what's come before but when actually if you push yeah. through with new stuff it will work and it will find an audience that, that's our that's that's cinema though right now uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly that's <laughs> no, not even just cinema that's culture everything yeah. is a remake everything's a retread yeah. because we haven't got any confidence in our ideas anymore mm. um, and it's kind of tragic but I think yeah because the, the, the pitch for Discovery what I'm hearing is that, that there's rumours that it's going to be a kind of I think set possibly during the Klingon war and therefore the ship design is caused a right fucking ruckus because everyone's like, oh, it kind of looks like a Klingon ship mess with a fucking Federation ship. And the fans are all losing their yeah. rag about that. But Whereas like, Star Wars, your ships can look like anything because it's so but, but massive think, and varied. But I think what my whole take on it is like, I'll wait and see. I'm not going to judge this because all my everyone's like, oh my God, it looks different. Good. It might be really, it could be shit, but I, this might be all right. On the other hand, yeah, The Force <coughs> Awakens had some things that looked different that were a bit shit. But, but and then there were things that looked completely the same but repainted a different colour. Yeah, but I think I think I, I'm more in favour of fuck it, try something new. And if you fall on your arse, yeah. then okay, but at least you've tried. Whereas I think propping yourself think, up on what's come yeah. before is just so. Rogue One pussy, was more you know? new than Force Awakens because it was trying to change the tone a bit. It did. Mm-hmm. Try. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe like our conclusion is probably that it failed, but it did. Whereas the Force Awakens is such a blatant, barefaced rehash. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll in say so this. many ways. The the Rogue One 
don't. I wouldn't even go so far to say that it failed. I think that for me, if the characters had been stronger, this would have been a kind of eight or nine out of ten level movie. Yes, yeah, so it failed. Without, without it, didn't, it didn't get the biscuit. It didn't get the biscuit. <laughs> but it was fucking close. And a lot of the shit we're saying there yeah. about how the plans and what we'd have done differently. I think all of that, if I'd come out and those yeah. characters, if uh, I said all I would have done differently, really, would have been taking the kind of tone of the character interactions of Guardians of the Galaxy and dropping that into this. So I think Star Wars can. I, yeah. I think you know we we were saying about the 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 prequel trilogy is that's not actually dark enough in some places. Like, it doesn't show us slavery. So so Star yeah. Wars like could do with yeah. like tonal variation. I'm fine with that. Corridor scene we said right at the start. Yeah. You know, corridor scene was very dark, very very dark, but it worked. It's the right because, kind of dark because it was narratively appropriate for that yeah. moment, and that's you're allowed to do that. I don't have an issue with the tone. It, it's just that if you make the tone all dark and bland and gritty yeah that's the issue you have to have spikes of ups and downs yeah. and you have to have moments of levity I mean, the, the, ro- the robot was, was for me was, was enough of those moments I guess he was the best thing in he it he was absolutely the best thing in it yeah more Cause, of cause that because he, yeah, he, he, he got his payoff at the end he got his he got, he got his you know ramp up banter all the way through the problem was he didn't have a ca- the, the, the actors that were responding to it weren't doing it right yeah. They weren't like he, the way he was interacting with them was top notch fucking banter, but they weren't playing it back. So you didn't have the kind of like I, I'm not looking for a kind of the the, the C3PO R2D2 thing. That, yeah, yeah but we've something. Done that, but but so having the the, the 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 every character in this was playing bland gritty rebel. No one was trying to put a spin on that or like, the, what, what kind of sprang to mind was like when Joy Depp was cast in like Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, from what I gather, he was he was just literally cast as a pirate. And he, and he took the oh yeah. no I'm gonna bring in the whole kind of like fucking like Rolling Stones you know vibe to this yeah. or whatever else and made it something more and I think that's what this was missing where it didn't have a Harrison Ford who went all right I'm a rogue and I went okay I'm gonna give the best fucking rogue ever yeah like even Carrie Fisher like w- w- when she was given Leia I think a lot the lines are good they're not amazing and um, she's always written to be sassy but it's Carrie Fisher's performance that makes that and the performers in this are just not up to scratch and the character the narrative that they're given is not, sorry not the narrative the dialogue they're given is yeah. not good enough either but if that had been tweaked so I mean even just cast different people you could probably have ended up with a stronger yeah. film you know, but uh, it's thing it's an off film, so it probably didn't have quite yeah. the same budget as the main ones. If you gave like the, the main, uh, if you took the actors that played Ray and Finn and deployed them in the two main female male roles in this, it would have been a better movie because yeah. they would have found some way to make that shit work. These guys just were like, nope, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, we're grim. We're, 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 yeah, we're, we're grim. And you're like, I don't. I mean, I hope that wasn't. I don't think uh, that was the microphone going like, you're grim. It's war. <laughs> in the grim dark of the future. Yeah, there is don't only war. St- stop smiling. You know, like that's. Yeah, I think that's it. So I, I don't think I've probably been harsher taking taking it apart. But I, what I will say is that was when I came out of it. My only criticism was the first sixty minutes was a yeah. slog, but mainly because the characters were not pleasant to be around. Yeah.